Dear Pilgrims, I was asked in 2019 to write a letter to the earth. After some thought, I chose to write about swallows. I love the shape of birds. I see the earth in such a different way to humans and I love their language. Swallows, small jewels of the sky, their constant search for summer. They lift my heart. The letter I wrote was as much a praise song to the wild as anything. And since that time, the world for humans has changed so much. I found myself wondering what I might write in the light of my own experience of the last few months. Meanwhile, I watched the late summer families of Swallow fledge and gather again for their journey south, hear their voices threading through the sky. It feels now, right now, that the need for change is more urgent. It feels that the world's offered humanity a lesson, and lessons have been learned. For some, the lessons have been of powerful kindness and commitment of our health workers, kindness and care and empathy. Likewise, there have been those who've worked in shops as teachers, neighbours who've cared to ensure vulnerable people weren't left to cope alone. For others, the lesson that was learned was one of greed and arrogance and how to profit most from a crisis. Many of us, including myself, have learned about loss and sorrow, the weight of love and the price of love. During lockdown, people began to discover their own neighbourhood. For many, the world shrank, but also, also, we began to understand the significance of a global problem, one that affected us all now directly. We live on such a small planet. This earth, our home, infinitesimally small in the universe, but still brim through with life. If you stop, listen, you can hear it. It's old, older than time, steeped in deep time, in which we humans have been alive for such a small fraction. And yet we've done so much that is harmful in that brief time. I find it so hard with all that's happening in the world today to find the words of courage and hope. I'll not list the things that feed the despair, from fire and flood to war and plague. It's all in the news 24 hours a day. It's the hardest thing in these days to hold on to hope, but it must be done. Those who've profited most from the exploitation of the earth are those who will continue to profit from our despair. There's no time now to give credence to those who would say it's too late, we're doomed, what difference can I make? To do so is to continue to fail. If we are to make a change, we need to listen, not simply only to the voices of humans, but to all life. The world is rich with many languages, only a few of which are human. We need to open our ears, open our minds, listen and learn, give rights to river, mountain, forest fight for their protection with every talent that we have in whatever way we know best. We need to listen to our children who understand that the value of creatures' habitat cannot be measured in gold, that true economics is health and happiness. Open our minds to the rights of life, all life. Not knowing what to write or how to write, I made instead a series of artefacts. Seven stones made in collaboration with the earth, deep time and the tides turning, the pull of the moon smoothing, eroding. Onto these I've painted using a brush made from the pin feather of a woodcock, gold sizing and then added gold leaf to form the shape of a labyrinth. It's an ancient symbol one that represents many things, is found in human history, in many stories, so many cultures. As such, it's a symbol that unites. It also has echoes in the natural world. A labyrinth is a pathway, a journey, a puzzle, an enigma, meditation, intuition, a connection to our ancestors. 
there is only one pathway. The name labyrinth is thought to derive from the word Lydian, from the double-headed blade of an axe. Also, I made a book. Made again with a gold leaf labyrinth on the cover, it's a book with two sides. The first side shows how to draw a labyrinth and talks of the seed, the path, connection. On the other side is a season song painted in ink that has slept for almost 200 years in a box of watercolours before being woken with water from the well of St. Huita. The writing's made with the same ink and a pen that belonged to an artist who lived over a century ago. The book is part spell, part seed, part praise song, part prayer. Maybe part talisman. When I asked myself what I wished to do in this letter to the earth, I wrote, if I could weave a spell of protection around you, but all I have is hope. These seven stones, this book, they carry my hopes. And like a maze with its twists and turns and dead ends, with a labyrinth, there's only one choice, whether to walk the path or not. So walk well, friends, and as you walk, listen. As you head north, look to the skies for swallows heading south on their own pilgrimage. For if you listen well, the swallows and the stones will tell you stories.